The Fires of God by John Drinkwater Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug Perth, Western Australia 1. Time gathers to my name. Along the ways where down my feet have passed, I see the years with little triumph crowned. Exulting not for perils dared, downcast and weary-eyed and desolate for shame of having been unstirred of all the sound of the deep music of the men that move through the world's days in suffering and love poor barren years that brooded over much on your own burden pale and stricken years go down to your oblivion we part with no reproach or ceremonial tears henceforth my hands are lifted to the touch of hands that labour with me and my heart hereafter to the world's heart shall be set and its own pain forget time gathers to my name days dead are dark the days to be a flame of wonder and of promise and great cries of travelling people reach me i must rise two was i not man could I not rise alone above the shifting of the things that be, rise to the crest of all the stars, and see the ways of all the world as from a throne? Was I not man, with proud imperial will, to cancel all the secrets of high heaven? Should not my soul unbridled purpose fill all hidden paths with light, when once was riven God's veil by my indomitable will? So dreamt I, little man of little vision great only in unconsecrated pride man's pity grew from pity to derision and still i thought albeit they deride yet is it mine uncharted ways to dare unknown to these and they shall stumble darkly unaware of solemn mysteries whereof the key is mine alone to bear so i forgot my god and I forgot the holy sweet communion of men, and moved in desolate places, where are not meek hands held out with patient healing, when the hours are heavy with uncharitable pain. No company but vain and arrogant thoughts were with me at my side, and ever to myself I lied, saying, Apart from all men thus I go, to know the things that they may never know. 3 then a great change befell long time i stood in witless hardihood with eyes on one sole changeless vision set the deep disturbed fret of men who made brief tarrying in hell on their earth travelling it was as though the lives of men should be set circle wise whereof one little span through which all passed was blackened with the wing of perilous evil baitless misery but all beyond making the whole complete o'er which the travelling feet of every man made way or ever he might come to death was odorous with the breath of honey-laden flowers and alive with sacrificial ministrations sweet of man to man and swift and holy loves and large heroic hopes whereby should thrive man's spirit as he moves from dawn of life to the great dawn of death it was as though mine eyes were set alone upon that woeful passage of despair, until I held that life had never known dominion but in this most troubled place, where many a ruined grace and many a friendless care ran to and fro in sorrowful unrest. Still in my hand I pressed hope's fragile chalice, whence I drew deep draughts, shaping belief that even yet should grow out of this dread confusion as of broken crafts driven along ungovernable seas some threads of order and that i should know after long vigil all the mysteries of human wonder and of human fate o oh, fool o oh, only great in pride unhallowed o oh, most blind of heart confusion but more dark confusion bred grief nurtured grief I cried aloud and said, Through trackless ways the soul of man is hurled, No sign upon the forehead of the skies, No beacon and no chart are given to him, And the inscrutable world but mocks his scars, And fills his mouth with dust. And lies bore lies, and lust bore lust, And the world was heavy with flowerless rods and pride outran the strength of man who had set himself in the place of gods 
4. Soon was I then to gather bitter shame of spirit, I had been most wildly proud, yet in my pride had been some little courage, formless as a cloud, unpiloted save by the vagrant wind, but still an earnest of the bonds that tame the legionary hates, of sacred loves that lean from the high soul of man towards his kind and all my grief had been for those I watched go to and fro. In uncompassioned woe, along that little span, my unbelief had fashioned in my vision, as all life, now even this so little virtue waned, for I became caught up into the strife that I had pitied, and my soul was stained at last by that most venomous despair, self-pity. I no longer was aware of any will to heal the world's unrest. I suffered as it suffered, and I grew troubled in all my daily trafficking, not with the large heroic trouble known by proud adventurous men, who would atone with their own passionate pity for the sting and anguish of a world of peril and snares. It was the trouble of a soul in thrall to mean despair, driven about a waste where neither fall of words from lips of love, nor consolation of grave eyes comforting, nor ministration of hand or heart, could pierce the deadly wall of self, of self. I was a living shame, a broken promise. I had stood apart with pride rebellious and defiant heart, and now my pride had perished in the flame. I cried for succour, as a little child might supplicate whose days are undefiled, for tutored pride and innocence are one. To the gloom has won a gleam of the sun, And into the barren desolate ways A scent is blown, as of meadows moan By cooling rivers in clover days. 5. I turned me from that place in humble wise, And fingers soft were laid upon mine eyes, And I beheld the fruitful earth, With store of odorous treasure, Full and golden grain, ripe orchard bounty, slender stalks that bore their flowered beauty with a meek content, the prosperous leaves that loved the sun and rain, shy creatures unreproved that came and went in garrulous joy among the fostering green, and over all the changes of the day and ordered year their mutable glory laid, expectant winter soberly arrayed, the prudent diligent spring whose eyes have seen the beauty of the roses uncreate, Imperial June, magnificent, elate, beholding all the ripening loves that stray among her blossoms, and the golden time of the full ear and bounty of the boughs, and the great hills and solemn chanting seas, and prodigal meadows, answering to the chime of God's good year, and bearing on their brows the glory of processional mysteries from dawn to dawn, the woven shadow and shine of the high moon, the twilight secrecies, and the inscrutable wonder of the stars flung out along the reaches of the night, and the ancient might of the binding bars waned as I woke to a new desire for the choric song of exultant strong earth-passionate men with souls of fire. 6. T'was given me to hear, as I beheld, with a new vision tranquil, asking not for mystic revelation, this glory long forgot, this rediscovered triumph of the earth in high creative will and beauty's pride, established beyond the assaulting years, it came to me a music that compelled surrender of all tributary fears, full-throated, fierce and rhythmic with the wide beat of the pilgrim winds and labouring seas, sent up from all the harbouring ways of earth, wherein the travelling feet of men have trod, mounting the firmamental silences, and challenging the golden gates of God. We bear the burden of the years, clean-limbed, clear-hearted, open-browed, albeit sacramental tears have dimmed our eyes, we know the proud content of men who sweep unbowed before the legionary fears, in sorrow we have grown to be the masters of adversity. Long ere from imminent silence slept obedient hands and fashioning will, the giant God within us slept, and dreamt of seasons to fulfil the shaping of our souls that still expectant earthward vigil kept. Our wisdom grew from secrets drawn from that far-off dim memorial dawn. 
wise of the storied ages we of perils dared and crosses borne of heroes bound by no decree of laws defiled or faiths outworn of poets who have held in scorn all mean and tyrannous things that be we prophesy with lips that sped the songs of the prophetic dead wise of the brief beloved span of this our glad earth travelling of beauty's bloom and ordered plan of love and love's compassioning of all the dear delights that spring from man's communion with man we cherish every hour that strays adown the cataract of the days we see the clear untroubled skies we see the glory of the rose and laugh nor grieve that clouds will rise and wax with every wind that blows nor that the blossoming time will close for beauty seen of humble eyes immortal habitation has though beauty's form may pale and pass wise of the great unshapen age to which we move with measured tread all girt with passionate truth to wage high battle for the word unsaid the song unsung the cause unled the freedom that no hope can gauge strong-armed sure-footed iron-willed we sift and weave we break and build into one hour we gather all the years gone down the years unwrought upon our ears brave measures fall across uncharted spaces brought upon our lips the words are caught wherewith the dead the unborn call from love to love from height to height we press and none may curb our might seven o blessed voices o compassionate hands calling and healing o great-hearted brothers i come to you ring out across the lands your benediction and i too will sing with you and haply kindle in another's dark desolate hour the flame you stirred in me o bountiful earth in adoration meet i bow to you o glory of years to be i too will labour to your fashioning go down go down unweariable feet together we will march toward the ways wherein the marshalled hands of morning wait in sleepless watch with banners wide unfurled across the skies in ceremonial state to greet the men who lived triumphant days and stormed the secret beauty of the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain